Jesus' voice for the criminal will be sentenced to death. Assalamu alaikum and have a great day everyone. I am Kim Raide Digia Park, the assigned reporter for the Chapter 3 together with Miss by Astra Bansil and we decided to divide the topic into two and came up with the idea na ako muna yung mauunang magre-report. So, let's start! Chapter 3, School Days in Binyan. So, before anything else, may trivia muna ako. Did you know that our national hero was whipped by his teacher to learn his lesson and behave well in class? Yes, ang alam kasi natin, di ba, napakatalino ni Jose Rizal. Toto naman, pero like many other kids, he also have this naughty side kung saan nakikipag-away siya sa kanyang mga kaklase. So, let's move on to my final discussion and learn more about our national hero. So, let's start with his early schooling. So, the first teacher of Jose Rizal was his mother, Teodora Alonso. So, this is the picture of his mother. I found this on Google. So, tinuruan niya si Rizal ng Latin alphabet and some Catholic prayers sa murang edad pa lamang. And after that, they hired two uh, private tutors na sinas Maestro Celestino and Maestro Lucas Padua. So, maestro means teacher. That time kasi ang mga Rizal is uh, afford nila kumuha ng mga private private tutors because uh, they are rich. And yun na nga, after nung ano, uh, maturuan si Rizal ng uh, dalawang maestro na yon, his father, which is Don Francisco Mercado Rizal, hired another private tutor, which is his old classmate, Leon Monroy, to teach Rizal his first lesson, lessons in Latin. So, si Leon Monroy po ay uh, dating kaklase ng kanyang papa at doon na sa kanila nakatira para turuan si Rizal ng lessons in Latin. But unfortunately, uh, Leon Monroy died after 5 months. So, doon, na-stop muna yung pag-aaral ni Jose Rizal. But Don Francisco, Mercado Rizal, his father, was not discouraged with that, with the loss of uh, private tutor. And he heard of a good teacher which is running a school, I mean, who is running a school in Binyan. And by the way, Binyan is quite far from Kalamba, kung saan nakatira ang mga Rizal that time. Uh, according to my research, sa ngayon, kung pupunta ka ng uh, Binyan from Kalamba at magtataksi ka, sa panahon natin ngayon ha, aabutin ka ng 21 minutes more or less para makarating doon and vice versa. So going back to the topic, uh, Rizal's family decided to send Jose Rizal to Binyan to uh, get his good education. And by that time, Jose Rizal was just 9 year old. So the next is... Jose goes to Binyan. So, one Sunday afternoon in June 1870, Jose Rizal left Calamba for Binyan. So, he was accompanied by his only brother, Pasiano Rizal. And they rode, rode in a karumata. So, ito po yung tinatawag na karumata sa mga panahong yun. Para siyang kalesa. So, uh, they reached Binyan after one and a half hour and they proceeded to the house of their aunt kung saan maninirahan si Jose Rizal. So, uh, it was almost night when they arrived in that house and, you know, the, the moon was about to rise. So, meaning, gabi na talaga nung dumating sila doon. So, that night, niyaya ni Leandro si Jose Rizal na mag-sightseeing sa town. So, Leandro was his cousin. So, instead of enjoying the uh, view or yung pagsasightseeing nila, Rizal was depressed of homesickness. Ang sabi pa niya, by the light of the moon, basahin ko lang ha, by the light of the moon, I remembered my native town and I thought with the tears in my eyes of my beloved father, my idolized mother, and my solicitous sisters. 
how sweet to me was Calamba, my own town, even if it was not so rich as Binyang. So, mapapansin nyo dun sa sinabi ni Jose Rizal, uh, now homesick talaga siya. And I can relate to that kasi share ko lang ako, almost six years or more than that na akong nag-boarding house. And alam ko po yung pakiramdam na ma-homesick as in nakakaiyak, nakakalungkot at napakahirap. So, ano na lang si Jose Rizal at that time, nine year old pa siya. So, just imagine kung paano siya nalulungkot sa mga panahong yun. So, let's move on to his first day in school. So, the next morning, so Monday na, di ba? Kasi nung pumunta sila ni Pasiano Rizal doon sa Binyan is Sunday. So, the next morning, Pasiano brought Jose Rizal to the school of Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz. So, ito yung tinutukoy ng kanilang papa na good teacher na nagpapatakbo ng private school dito sa, or doon sa Binyan. So, uh, the school was uh, 30 meters away from Jose's aunt. So, by the way, itong si uh, Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz ay kilala na ni Pasiano kasi uh, it is his former teacher. So, he introduced uh, Rizal to that maestro and after that, he departed and returned to uh, Calamba. So, iniwan niya na si Jose Rizal doon. So, for your information, ang classroom nila dati is uh, para siyang uh, nipahat daw, nipahat meaning bahay kubo. So, nag-research ako, ganyan, ganyan yung mga nipahat. So, Doon, mis, doon sila mismo nag-aaral sa bah bahay ni Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz sa Nipahat na yun. So, after that, Jose was assigned to his seat and Maestro Justiniano Cruz asked him. Tinanong siya ni Maestro Justiniano, Do you know Spanish? Pero in Spanish to what? Kasi yung source natin is uh, translated into English na siya. So, Yun ang tanong sa kanya ni, uh, ni Maestro Justiniano. Sabi niya, or tanong niya, do you know Spanish? So, sumagot naman si Jose Rizal, a little sir. And sabi naman ni Maestro, do you know Latin? Sumagot na naman si Jose Rizal, a little sir. At doon na, nagsitawanan yung mga kaklase nila. Sa pangunguna ni Pedro. So, Pedro was the son of the school teacher. So, even before pala, no, marami na talagang bullies. So, going back to the story, uh, Maestro Justiniano stopped all the noises and began the discussion for that day. So, yun lang for that first day in school. Let's move on to his first school brawl. Brawl means noisy uh, quarrel or fight. So, in the afternoon of his first day in school, Jose Rizal uh, met Pedro. Pedro, the bully. So, galit siya dito kasi nga pinagtawanan siya earlier nung magkausap sila nung uh, maestro. So, Jose Rizal challenged Pedro for a fight. So, si ang tapang ng ating pambansang bayani. So, Pedro accepted the challenge because he was confident enough na matatalo niya si Jose Rizal because by that time, Jose Rizal was ano, small. Kumbaga, maliit siya and Pedro is way uh, mas malaki and mas matanda. So, Pedro was confident enough to beat the Kalamba boy. So, to make the story short, they result in the classroom and Jose Rizal defeated Pedro kasi nga, magaling pala siyang makipag-wrestling. Tinuruan kasi siya ng kanyang uncle na si Uncle Manuel, the brother of his mother. Kaya, nanalo siya laban kay Pedro and he became famous to their classmates. So, grabe, sikat na si Jose Rizal dahil natalo niya si Pedro, ang nangungunang bully doon. So, after the class, a classmate of Jose Rizal named Andres again challenged Rizal for a for an arm wrestling. So, I know familiar kayong lahat sa arm wrestling. Yun bang kumaganyanan kayo? Alam niyo yun? Sorry, I forgot to ano, search or research for a picture. Pero I know na alam nyo ang arm wrestling. So, ito na naman si ano si Rizal. Uh, 
pumayag siya sa arm wrestling na yon and then uh, because he has this weaker arm he lost the challenge and muntik pa siyang ano i mean muntik pang mabagok yung ulo niya that time so nahirapan talaga si Jose Rizal so sa mga sum sumunod na araw he had other fights with the you know Binyan boys so minsan uh, natatalo minsan nananalo ganyan naman talaga di ba minsan nananalo ka minsan natatalo ka so actually hindi naman basta gulero si Rizal by nature hindi lang talaga siya umaatras kapag uh, may nagcha-challenge sa kanya. So, yun yung story niya sa kanyang first school brawl. So, for my last part, which is uh, painting lessons in Binyan. So, near the school was the house of an old painter named Huangko. Huangko is a father-in-law of a school teacher. And, di ba, Jose Rizal loves painting and drawing. So, palagi siyang nakatambay dun sa studio ni Huangko. And, Huangko also uh, gave him free lessons in drawing and painting. Kasi, he was real, really impressed by the artistic talent of Jose Rizal. So, doon siya natutong mag-paint at sumikat din siya dahil sa kanyang galing sa pagpinta at pagdrawing. So, that's all for my uh, assigned topic. Uh, for my learning pala, I have learned a lot like um, how difficult it is to have a good education before. Napansin ko kasi uh, si Jose Rizal, maswerte siya kasi nagkakaroon siya ng mga private tutors because mayaman yung pamilya niya. So, naiisip ko na paano na lang pala yung mga mahihirap dati, hindi maka-afford mag-hire ng private tutor. So, mahirap kang, maka mahirap kang makapag-aral kung wala kang pera. And another thing is, uh, dati pala, or dati na pala may mga bullies na sa school. Hindi, kumbaga, yung mga estudyante dati is, may mga palaaway na, hindi pala baguhan yung mga ngayon. And, also, I observed na yung pagkakaroon ng close family ties among Filipinos is uh, nagsimula na nung una pa lang. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo sa family ni Jose Rizal is uh, meron silang close family ties na tinatawag. Kasi yun na nga, napakadami nila pero hindi sila nag-aaway-aaway at nagmamahalan sila. So, that's it. I hope you also have learned something and thank you for watching and listening. Bye! Assalamu alaikum and have a blessed day everyone. I am by Astra A. Bansil, the second reporter of Chapter 3 entitled The School Days in Binyan. Together with the first reporter a while ago, Miss Kim Raida Gyapar. As what she said before, we divided the topic into two and now it's my turn to discuss the remaining subject matters. So, let's go on. Chapter 3, Daily Life in Binyan Jose led a methodical life in Binyan. Methodical means systematic or well-ordered. He was so methodical, systematic in thought or behavior, and he got everything documented. We all know that Jose is one of the famous writers in our country because of his ability of taking down a lot of information as what he observed and experienced in his surroundings. So, speaking of daily life in Binyan, isa sa mga naitalang gunang-gunam o mas kilala sa salitang ala-ala, babasahin ko. Jose Rizal once said, I heard the 4 o'clock mass in the morning. If there one or I studied my lesson at the same hour and heard the mass afterwards, upon returning, I looked for my bowl of fruit in the grove and ate it. So, ang sabi dito, he heard the 4 o'clock mass prayer habang nag-aaral siya ng kanyang lesson and afterwards, pumupunta siya sa kakawyan upang maghanap ng my bowl of fruit at ito'y kanyang kakainin. So, a short trivia about mabolo fruit. Ito ay isa sa mga paboritong prutas ni Jose. Mabolo fruit, also known as the kamagong tree, which is also called the iron wood because of its strength like an iron. I know that these fruit are unknown to few of us mostly in our generation because some of these trees are lead of being endangered. 
due to its good quality dense wood and having an aesthetic dark color in terms of manufacturing furniture. Next is best student in school. In terms of school studies, Jose beat all the Binion boy students and surpassed them all in Spanish, Latin, and other subjects. Ang iba sa kanyang mga older classmates got jealous on him because of his intellectual superiority. Aside from his angelic personality, ang pagiging matalino at almost a perfect man, he is also a normal person like us who commits their flaws or mga kapasawayan. Actually, he got punished by his teacher every time he had a fight outside the school. Let's proceed to end of Binyan schooling. Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz was a good teacher to Rizal when he attended a private school in Binyan from 1870 to 1871. Itong teacher din ito ang nag-push or nagbigay ng encouragement kay Don Francisco at Doña Tidora na dapat pag-aralin sa Manila sa kanyang kolehiyo si Rizal dahil sa kanyang katalinuhan. In 1871, month of December, Jose received a letter from his sister, Saturnina, informing him the arrival of steamer Talim that would take him from Binyan to Calamba. Then, on Saturday afternoon, December 17, 1871, Rizal left Binyan together with Arturo Camps. Arturo Camps is a Frenchman who is a friend of his father, Don Francisco, and who took care Rizal in his entire trip. Upon arriving to Calamba, Binalkam ito ng kanyang parents at mga kapatid. And for Rizal, para sa kanya, the Christmas of 1871 is the most joyous and memorable Christmas sa kanyang buhay. Now, let's proceed to Injustice to Hero's Mother. After the Happy Christmas Holiday in 1871, Don Francisco thought of sending Jose in Manila to study. So, pinaplano na ni Don Francisco na doon pag-aralin sa kanyang kolehiyo si Jose. But suddenly, tragedy happened to their family kung saan si Doña Teodora at ang kanyang kapatid na si Jose Alberto ay napagbintangan sa pagkakalang kanilang pinagplanuhan ang paglason sa asawa ni Jose Alberto. So this Alberto's wife already abandoned her children and their home when Alberto is in Europe to have a business trip. So nung nalaman ni Alberto, na itong asawa niya ay may iba ng kinakasamang lalaki at inabando na ang kanilang mga anak, that's the time umuwi si Alberto sa Pilipinas upang mag-file ng divorce. Ngunit dahil sa kabaitan ni Donya Teodora, pinayo nito sa kanyang kapatid na bigyan pa ito ng isa pang pagkakataon at minabuting itago ito sa nakakarami maliban sa kanilang pamilya. Di kalaunan, Gumawa at gumawa pa rin ng paraan ang asawa ni Jose Alberto. Siya ay nakipag-aredlo sa isang lieutenant ng Guardia Civil at kanilang pinlano ang kasong ipaparatang sa dalawang magkapatid. Na siya raw ay tinangkang lasunin ni Doña Teodora at Jose Alberto. Sila ay gumawa ng mga fabricated evidences upang mas lalong mapalakas ang kasong ipaparatang sa dalawang magkapatid. Hindi rin naging kanais-nais ang trato ng Guardia Civil kay Doña Teodora dahil pilit nitong inutos na lakarin ng nakapaa ni Doña Teodora mula Kalamba hanggang Santa Cruz na may tinatayang 50 kilometrong distansya. And now let's move on to the martyrdom of Comburza. On January 20, 1872, the Cavite mutiny flared up. The execution of Father Gomez, Father Burgos, and Father Zamora held on 17th day of February. Si Father Burgos ay isang profesor at nakakatandang kaibigan ni Pasyano na Kuya ni Rizal. Father Burgos trust a lot to Pasyano because he was his assistant in the fight of Filipinization of the parishes. A years later, Jose Rizal wrote something about the story of the three fathers, the martyrdom of Gomburza. Actually, Jose Rizal was only 11 years old when the martyrdom of Gomburza took place. That's all to my report. I have three key lessons learned from my topic. First is having a loving family. Next is um, being cheerful to your life or allowing yourself to become a happy person. 
And the third one is attaching yourself to education. So first is the loving family, kung saan ito yung nagmumold ng pagkatao mo. So dito ka rin natututo kung paano maging marispeto sa kapwa, lalo na sa matatanda. Tulad ng nanay ni Jose Rizal, he took care of her children. So namold niya ito, namold ng magandang pagkatao nila, tinuruan niya ito simula at bata pa lang ng tamang asal at Tinuruan na rin paano maging religious person. The next one is, don't hesitate yourself to become a happy person. So, si Rizal, um, norm, just like a normal person, nagkukumit din siya ng pagkakamali. Just like us. So, those mistakes or those flaws ay kinoconsidered niya as his learnings. Huwag maproblemahan kung may mga nagawa kang mali kasi... As a person, lesson learned lang rin yun sa atin. And the third one is attaching yourself to education. So, sa nanay ni Rizal, napaka-importante ng edukasyon. Even though na richest family na sila in Calamba because they are landowners, pero hindi nila inahasahan ang kanilang kayamanan, kundi ang makapagtapos ng pag-aaral. Lastly, thank you for watching and listening to our video presentation with Miss Kim Raidagya Park. And sa last part ng video namin, doon namin ilalagay yung mga key points ng aming report. So, thank you and goodbye!